I'm an obstetrician gynecologist, and uh, I've been doing this for about 20 years. And uh, about 10 or 12 years ago, uh, I changed <clears throat> the way I practiced, uh, primarily because uh, I wanted to stay married to uh, my beautiful wife, and uh, who's right back there. And uh, my wife was the impetus for me to learn uh, about bioidentical hormones, uh, because uh, I needed to fix my personality two weeks before her period. She was having a real problem with, with me two weeks before her menstrual cycle. And uh, so that's a whole nother lecture. But uh, I learned about bioidentical hormones, and uh, my personality remained much stable, uh, much more stable throughout the month. It was an amazing thing that, uh, that happened, that my wife took these hormones and I became a much better husband, but that's uh, neither here nor there. But uh, what happened was is that I started lecturing about this, and uh, I don't think Roby Mitchell is in, in here, but Dr. Roby Mitchell uh, in, from Amarillo, Texas, heard me speak about uh, hormones, and he said, great, an OBGYN who understands bioidentical hormones. But he said, let me tell you, son, if you really want to help patients, you need to learn about the adrenal gland and about thyroid. And uh, I said, okay, Dr. Mitchell, that's what I'll do, uh, because I wanted to expand my knowledge. And about that time, I started having patients who I had treated with progesterone and estrogen and, and whatever. And about that time, I started having patients who, come in, who would come in and say, Doc, you know, I feel much better, but I'm still tired. And uh, I still have a little nervousness and irritability and you know, I still have some depression. I'm better since you gave me those hormones, but I, I still have some depression. And, and, you know, I can't concentrate like I used to. I, I have trouble focusing, and, and I'm apprehensive. I used to be a real go-getter, and now I'm not as, 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 as bold as I used to be. And, and, you know, I still have some weakness, and, and I still feel frustrated. I'm just frustrated about everything that's happening to me. And, you know, I have these food cravings, and, and uh, I, I seem like the room is spinning sometime, and sometimes I'm spinning in the room. And I said... Ms. Jones, I, I thought you told me you were feeling better. Is, 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 is that all? Uh, well, you know, I have some lightheadedness, and, you know, I, 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 I sleep well, but I just don't sleep like I used to. And, and my PMS is better, but, and, and, you know, I have these muscle pains and spasms, and I have this epigastric pain, and I've been looking at these commercials about the purple pill. Doc, do you think I should take that purple pill? What do you think? My sister's taking that purple pill. Do you think my... And then, you know, Doc, I have these food, and, I, and let me show you my list of drugs that I'm allergic to. And then, uh, you know, I, I'm having this dyspepsia and indigestion and diarrhea. Somebody told me I had irritable bowel. You know, my sister has irritable bowel. Do you think I have irritable bowel? I don't know. Do what is irritable bowel? <sighs> And the first thought in your head is, who scheduled this patient at 11.45? You know, don't they know I have to have lunch? Don't they know? And then you say, okay, Ms. Jones, this, this is what we're going to do. We're going to have to tackle this. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to draw a FSH, a serum thyroid, a CBC, a SMA7, cholesterol, an ANA, and just, you know, we can just mark a line right down the whole lab sheet. Just order whatever you want. You do that primarily because you know that all of those labs are going to come back absolutely normal. You know that before. But what does that accomplish for you? Well, here's what it accomplishes for you. It takes at least two weeks to get all those labs back, and you know Ms. Jones cannot come back for another two weeks. But in two weeks, she's going to show up, and she's not going to be late. She's going to be early for her appointment. And she's going to come in, and she's going to say, Doc, what did you find? And you're going to say, Ms. Jones, you really didn't find anything. You know, your labs really look pretty good. Then she's going to say, but Doc, what about my fatigue, my irritable bowel? Do you think I have irritable bowel? What about that purple pill? She's going to go through it all over again. And then you're going to say, Ms. Jones, Ms. Jones, Ms. Jones. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to do an ultrasound, a CT scan, an MRI. We're going to do an ultra, a, a, a laparoscope, a, 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 a cystoscope. We're going to... <clears throat> Ms. Jones, you're going to order all those tests, and you know all of those tests are going to come back what? Normal. But you have accomplished one thing because it takes at least six weeks to schedule all of those tests. So at least you don't have to see Ms. Jones for six weeks instead of two. So you're, you're improving, you're, you're, getting, you know, you're gaining some ground. But Ms. Jones will come back in six weeks. And at that point in time, she's going to ask you, what did you find? Because you've looked in every orifice and you've created some orifices that I don't even have and you looked in those. You must have found something. And you're going to look at all those lab reports. They're all going to say normal exam, normal exam. And you're going to tell Ms. Jones, and Ms. Jones is going to say, but doc, what about my fatigue? My blah, blah, blah. 
And now you're going to have to practice something what I call visitus interruptus, because that's the only way you're going to be able to get out of the room. And in order to practice visitus interruptus, you have to write a prescription. What are you, what are you going to write? Because all of your lab tests and all of your imaging tests have been normal. Well, what you're going to do is you're going to look at her labs, you're going to review them one more time, and you're going to kick yourself because you missed her cholesterol of 201. <laughs> and because she has a cholesterol of 201, you can give her a Lipitor, right, uh, right Doc? You can give a Lipitor, okay? So <clears throat> you give her the Lipitor. Then you ask her about her hormones and whatever, and you give her a Premarin. And because uh, these are the top 10 drugs, and you, uh, because of fatigue, you give her a Synthroid, even though her TSH is normal. You give her the Hydrocodone for the pain. You give her the Prilosec for her epigastric pain. You give her the Norvast because she has high blood pressure, the Glucophage because you think she has metabolic syndrome, the Albuterol and Claritin because she has all her allergies. And then you give her the Zoloft because somebody needs some Zoloft because if she doesn't need it, you'll take it whenever she comes in. So uh, that Zoloft prescription will not go to waste. Now, now you have this lady on 10 drugs, you have no diagnosis. So why do you give her those drugs? Well, because they're popular. But the problem with popular thinking is that it doesn't require you to think at all. It's easier to do what other people do and hope that they thought it out, because everybody else is given those drugs, so it must be okay. All right? Now, <clears throat> if you don't have a diagnosis, that is not a problem. Because if you don't have a diagnosis, we don't have any problem with coming up with diagnoses. And these are a popular non-diagnoses diagnosis, okay? Now, one popular diagnosis is chronic fatigue. And I'd like to ask someone, what is the criteria for diagnosing someone with chronic fatigue? Well, let me tell you what the criteria is. The criteria for chronic fatigue is that you must have a patient to walk into your office and say these words, Doc, I am tired all the time. If you have a patient who comes in and says she's tired all the time, you can diagnose her with chronic fatigue. Because what does chronic mean? It means all the time. What does fatigue mean? Tired. So if a patient comes in and says she's tired all the time, you can regurgitate those words and create, it, create a diagnosis as chronic fatigue. Then if the patient comes in and says, Doc, my muscles and joints hurt all the time. Every muscle and joint in my body hurts all the time. Then you tell her she has fibromyalgia. Because fibro means joints or tendons or whatever, or fibrous tissue. The my means muscle and algebra means pain. So a patient says, I have joint and muscle pain. You can tell her she has joint and muscle pain. What a revelation, right, Dr. Silva? Now, then the patient comes in and says, Doc, I am depressed. And you can tell her that she has Depression. Isn't that, isn't, isn't, aren't you glad you went to medical school and residency so that you could restate these uh, symptoms? Then the patient says, you know, doctor, I have trouble concentrating. I can't focus like I used to. And you say, well, obviously you have a deficit in your attention. <laughs> Doc, <clears throat> everything that I eat irritates my bowel. And say, well, <laughs> it's obvious that you have irritable bowel. And then you say, Doc, you know, sometimes I'm up, sometimes I'm down, you know, I have my moods just go all over the place. Well, obviously you are bipolar. You know, the patient is not asking you to regurgitate what she just said or he just said. The patient wants to know why am I tired, why do my muscles and joints ache, why am I depressed, why do I have trouble focusing, why is my bowel irritated, and why are my moods up and down, okay? So we're not here to regurgitate or to reinterpret what the patient says, we're here to try and give some type of reason why and then also trying to figure out uh, how we can help them. Now, what this really boils down to is stress. And if you don't know that that patient is under stress, let me tell you how you find out. Ask your front office. Because your front office knows Ms. Jones well because, you know, she calls about three times a day. And someone in the office, you know, goes to church with her and she'll tell you, oh, yeah, my pastor, she, he, he won't even talk to her anymore because she's so crazy. She always comes up after. And, you know, she's been married three or four times. And, you know, her children, they come in here and they tear up the, the waiting room. You know, they know Miss Jones very well. And they know it's stress because they stress, she stresses them out every time they come, she comes in. Now, the thing is, is that we say in our paternalistic attitude, our maternalistic attitude, is that it is just stress. If you don't get anything else out of this lecture today, never say the words just and stress together. 
because stress is important. And we're both reading Genie and the Genes. Great minds think alike. Uh, I'm just happy that, that uh, I saw that and I looked at my wife and I said, see, I told you, see, I'm reading that book. See, that's why. But anyway, in Genie in Your Genes, it talks about how stress affects the transcription of DNA. So stress is important. It's no such thing as just stress.